if you imagine looking at a mountain and the light source is here, the light is going to illuminate this side and that's kind of the highest point. The light can't basically bend <clears throat> unless there's a black hole here, but there's no black hole. And let's just say for the purposes of argument, there's no black hole inside the person's head. So this light basically has to travel in a straight line and so uh, the furthest it can go is to the top of this point here. And so this side is in shadow. So if you look at the nose, let's say, all right, if this, no, if this is these nostrils, and we're looking up on that nose, this light, it basically hits this line here, and that line represents this point. Okay. And so everything from this point could be in shadow. Uh, if you wanted to, or you could say it hits that line, but the, the real shadow doesn't start till this side, so it's possible to do that as well. And this being the eye. Okay, so I'm going to show you some very quick. You can do a traditional face, the light would be up here, shadows. The eyebrow, the brow casts a shadow underneath the eye sockets. The nose basically casts a shadow. The upper lip has a shadow. The lower lip creates a shadow above that chin. The cheekbones, if you're blessed with high cheekbones, will create shadows underneath there. The ear will cast a shadow. And then the head itself casts a shadow on the neck below it. Okay, so that's lighting scheme number one. Number two, you have the same lighting scheme. Okay. But in this instance, the light is even more intense so that the shadows are darker. And then the shadows basically fall within the, the, um, if you look at a skull, right? This is probably the worst skull ever, but <laughs> these sockets here, the shadow is going to basically kind of fall into the shapes of the sockets there. This nose, the shadow gets even deeper. This lower lip creates even more of a, of a shadow. And then these shapes on the skull become even more pronounced. Okay. So it's like version one, but even more. And then you can even go further with that and say, well, this brow, this nose, it's almost like the nose pops out of the shadow there. And the face is almost entirely in shadow like that. Okay, does that make sense? The face, uh, the shadows do f depend on the facial structures for sure. I'm just using a very generic kind of face with uh, actually very Caucasian features, I guess. But the ear itself actually even casts a shadow onto itself. So that's why a lot of times when you see me draw something, I'll draw the ear completely in black. And then this head casts even a darker shadow and a bigger shadow across. Then you can do side lighting schemes, right? Where the nose, I was kind of illustrating with that pyramid or mountaintop, this nose itself creates a shadow. The eye socket creates a shadow, so the shadows are to the to that side. 
this uh, spot here on the uh, upper lip. Cast a little divot shadow, upper lip, and then the side of this cheek. This chin, side, side of that chin, sorry. Side of that cheek, side of that temple. And you have that. Okay, because we're on video, actually I can just show it on the same illustration and you can do a time lapse and see it. So as that shadow get, as this light source gets um, more intense, this nose shadow will get cast deeper, the same way like your shadow in the course of a day gets longer as the sun sets. When the sun's right above you, the shadow's right underneath, and then as it kind of moves away from you at an angle, your shadow on the ground lengthens and, and distorts. And so now these shadows start getting deeper and darker on the side of this head here. Okay. And then it can go even darker still. So that top part of the upper lip this gully, like right there, this, if you look at the upper lip, lower lip, the chin, you can see how this chin kind of protrudes out. So, imagine this, uh, Imagine sort of the sun kind of rotating around this head, and then even more so, it actually starts, all that starts looking like it's in shadow. And then it starts coming across the forehead. And then if it keeps going, <clears throat> entirely it becomes all black itself. Okay. Oh, I'll do one last head. I forgot. Then there is the... Um, the complete up lighting. Adam's apple there. And this is when like they're holding a candle underneath their face essentially. So if you really get into it, there's probably like 20 different ways you can kind of light a face. Actually an infinite probably, but 20 really uh, distinctly different ones. And if you want to teach yourself, you can maybe flip through different comic books and see how different people approach and put the classifications together. There's one where there's like a strong front light source and then a weak back light source. And so you get strong shadows, but then you have reflected light on the other side of the head. Okay. Thing with uh, metal is <clears throat> the same way we're talking about that light hitting the top of that mountain, this ridge line, this ridge line here. I'm looking for the highest point of, let's say, this cheekbone here. And this line, the same way I've done it on the nose, is going to be on that cheek. But rather than doing a straight line like that, which you can do, the thing with metal is that it can take reflections, and that's precisely what this is. is a reflection of, of some element over here reflecting on that shiny um, silver metal. Um, but it can distort it, especially if the, if the metal itself is curved. And so... You add a little life to that line, 
and you've put it basically where all the high points, the ridge lines. I mean, the easiest way to think about doing chrome effects is if you have an object like this, a cylinder, just run the highlights along the edges near the edges like this, and you can make one kind of thicker than the other. Okay, let's say, let's say that's a bullet. Okay, and then to help kind of sell it, although that bullet has a tip that's really kind of, there we go. It's important to have that kind of outer edge. That rim lighting is to um, basically run a highlight along the edge, keep it consistently on the same side, like that. Okay? Another thing about metal is like, the more reflections you can put in, the better. And when I say the more, I'm not saying like go crazy about it. A lot of times you'll see, uh, especially in the old Bob Layton, John Romita Jr., Iron Man, they'll draw, for example, They'll light it in a way where all of a sudden there's like big circle, medium sized circle, small circle. And they'll kind of do that everywhere. And you'll go like, wow, that looks really metallic. And the reason why is that again it, it tricks the it's a cipher. It's something that tricks the brain into thinking it's seeing something. Same way as if I draw lines going back. If I draw a tree here and another tree like that, and a smaller tree like that, and perspective lines. You can't help but feel like you're looking into space, that um, you're looking towards a horizon point. And these objects, even though I've drawn three different sized trees, that you, in your mind, think that they're all the same height, but just smaller because of perspective. And with those white dots that I just drew on the side of Iron Man is the reflections of lights overhead. Even if Iron Man is out in the middle of the desert, um, they'll do the same rendering trick, uh, which I think is funny, um, because at that point it's become such a cipher that the mind immediately thinks of reflections and shiny metal that it's not really reading exactly what it is. And basically if there's lights overhead, okay, and they're going off in a distance like this, overhead lights, I say in an office space. And these are windows. It's these lights that are being reflected on top of all shell head. All right. So just by putting those three old school Iron Man right there. Okay, so that light is here, this light is here, that light is here. And you could do the same thing with these windows. One, two, three, right? So you can basically, one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. And if you kind of do them, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Two, three. It starts making it look more metallic.